Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. If you are a new subscriber, welcome to my channel. I am a part-time online reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Happy to have you here as always. And in today's video, we're going over what sold from February 16th through the 28th of 2022. If you watched my last video of my Cozy Threads unboxing, you'll notice that I am wearing the same sweatshirt because I really, really like this sweatshirt and I just filmed that video a day or so ago. <laughs> so you may be seeing this sweatshirt more often as well. I actually got it at Costco. It's the brand Seven for All Mankind. No, it's not. It's the brand Seven, not to be confused with Seven for All Mankind. And it was only like $6, so I love it. Okay, so getting to what you're here for, not my sweatshirt drama. <laughs> um, these are sales from the 16th through the 28th of 2022. It was a short month, so my sales aren't as great as they could be, but we are missing a couple of days that we normally would have in other months. So as always, we're gonna start on Facebook Marketplace where I did have one sale, finally. It was a vintage green double frog planter. This was actually my mom's um, and I remember being in multiple places in our house ever since I was growing up, but she decided that she didn't need it anymore and she knows that vintage is really in. So she gave it to me to sell and it sold for $15. There was a $1.32 fee, giving me a profit of $13.68. And I also only had one sale on Mercari. It was also a vintage item. It was a pair of vintage silver tone, atomic star looking clip-on earrings. They had no brands, but they did say patent on the back of the earrings themselves, but in really, really great condition and it was a free to me item. So I had them listed for pretty high, around $20 originally, but I forgot with Mercari, you're able to lower the price on a daily basis to alert people that your item is now cheaper. And I totally forgot and it was listed at 13. So someone sent me an offer for 10. I would have liked to gotten closer to 20, but that's okay, I'll take it, $10. There was a $1.59 fee, giving me a profit of $8.41. Now moving on to Poshmark, where I only had nine sales. That's, that's pretty bad <laughs> for two weeks on Poshmark, for me anyway. Um, but I will be going over every single item since there are so few of them. The first one is a new with tags, Lane Bryant, gray, sparkly, one button blazer. This was a newer Lane Bryant tag, really excellent condition. I mean, it was new and it sold for $29 and it was a size 14. So a little bit on the smaller size of what Lane Bryant offers. Next, we have a new with tags, Fenty for stance by Rihanna frostbite striped sheer anklet with a feather trim. This came out of a fun box. It was actually a Christmas themed fun box. They sold for $15. Then we have an unbranded item that sold relatively quickly. It was a black wide leg smocked chest sleeveless wide strap jumpsuit. This was a size extra large. I really just think it was from like a company, like a boutique or like a China wish company or something, but the fabric felt really nice. And this came out of my most recent thread up 50 pound bulk rescue box. And because it was in such good condition, I figured that it might still sell, especially since it was a size extra large and it did sell for $20. Then I had a bundle, which doesn't happen very often on Poshmark. And thankfully it was with two items that I've had in my stores and my closets for probably close to two years. So I was very, very thankful to see them go. It was a bundle of an Ann Taylor factory gray pleated neck tank top or sleeveless blouse, and then a pink Tommy Hilfiger cable knit sweater that had no size tag. 
Someone bundled these together on their own and then they sent me an $18 offer, which I quickly accepted just to get them into a new home. And when I pulled the Tommy Hilfiger sweater, I actually saw the faintest stain, kind of reminded me of like a coffee stain. I was packing up the order late at night, so I didn't have time to actually like wash it and launder it like I probably should have. So in a pinch, I used this stuff it's called, where's my camera? There it is. <laughs> it's called Amidex and it is ink and stain remover. And not only is it supposed to remove ink, which I have had some luck with, it also gets the like ring around the collar, the yellow discoloration out. And it worked pretty well for this sweater as well. It was like the faintest stain and I did two applications of this. And even though I could still see it so faintly, I still decided to send the customer their item. I got five stars, everybody's happy. So if you're interested in this, um, I did update my Amazon affiliate links, so they are down below. If you do end up purchasing something or using my link to purchase other things through Amazon, I do get a very small portion of money back. So. Um, I put most of the items that I frequently use down in the description of all of my videos. Okay, so happy to see those two items go. Next, we have a new with tags Massimo slate gray twisted front convertible bikini top. This was a size medium. It sold for $11 and it came out of a thread up fun box as well. We had another vintage planter to sell. This again was a free to me item. It was a vintage donkey slash horse. I really wasn't sure what it was with a sombrero. It was made of clay. It did have a very large crack that was repaired. But let me tell you, whoever repaired this did such a good job. I tried so hard to pull that apart to see if it would even like budge because shipping cracked things through the mail scares the crap out of me. <laughs> I'm so scared that it's going to break during transit and I never want someone to receive a broken item. So I made sure that it was on there good. It made it safely to the customer and I got five stars as well. So it sold for $11. Then we have uh, something that I sourced from ThreadUp's, I think the outlet center or just their regular um, dress section, I can't remember. And it was the brand Cyan, C-Y-A-N, Cayenne, Cyan, I don't know how to say that, but it's by Shoshana, um, which I believe can be sold at, or used to be sold at Anthropology and like some of those other like high-end places and it was a black party cocktail dress. It was a very stiff and structured material. It was a smaller size, size two. Someone actually messaged me on Poshmark asking if I would take $35 with discounted shipping. I think I had it listed for 50, but I've had it for a while, so I was absolutely okay with that offer. So off it went for $35. Then we have an item that I've had for a very long time and I didn't want to donate it because it was a really interesting piece. So it was the sack, but it was a rainbow crochet knit handbag, very small, very Y2K-ish, but whatever like the handle was made out of was starting to disintegrate and including the, um, the panels on the bottom as well. Like when you touched it, it would be ever so slightly sticky. So I tried Goo Gone, I tried just normal cleaning, soap and water, nothing helped. And it's because the item is starting to disintegrate because of its age. Plastics don't hold up forever. So I did disclose that. This customer and I went back and forth between eight and $12 of an offer. And finally, I just decided to accept this $9 offer on the purse and I did lose about 43 cents on it. And then the last thing to sell for these two weeks was a Loft Outlet Pink Linen Blend Lace Up Sweater. This I also purchased from ThreadUp's Outlet Center and it sold for $16. So for my nine Poshmark sales, I made $164 in sales, $36.46 in fees, I gave out shipping discounts of $7.73, giving me a profit of $119.81 with an average sales price of $18.22. 
And moving on to eBay where, thank goodness, I had more than nine sales. I had 17 sales. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but I have picked out some ones that I want to talk about. Um, either I did really well or I did really bad on them. <laughs> so the first thing I want to discuss is a pair of Levi High Rise denim shorts. Denim shorts sold in February, yes. I think this went to a warmer climate state, so that makes sense. These came out of my Jomar denim shorts box and they sold for $15. Then we have kind of a boo-boo or not, not a boo-boo, really more like a poor decision on my part to purchase these. So it was a pair of Air Balance bright green sandals that totally reminded me of Birkenstock. I purchased these from ThreadUp's Outlet Center, but when I received them, they felt like the cheapest things in the world. You might even be able to get this brand at Walmart. I do not know. I do not shop at Walmart. I avoid it like the plague. Um, so it was a Birkenstock-like bottom, but the actual sandal part was like foam. Like, you know those little foam cards that kids can use to cut out things and make ornaments out of them? That's exactly what it was made out of. And there was one portion of the shoe that was actually coming away from that foam material. I did note it. So when a customer on eBay sent me an $8 offer, I really had to consider if I wanted to counter or not. I ended up accepting the $8. I did still make a profit. I made a profit of $2.40. And normally I'd put these type of sandals in like um, a padded flat rate or something like that. Because of the damage of that one piece that was kind of splitting apart, I didn't want it to be further damaged in shipping. So I did send it in a box and I actually got feedback Back from the customer saying thank you for sending them in a box most people send them in bags and she really enjoyed having that extra protection it gave me a little bit to think about when I'm shipping shoes now I guess it just depends on how much they weigh and what I can fit them in <laughs> and what's the cheapest of course next was the most beautiful bracelet and necklace set I've ever seen so it was a Murano Italy Venetian foil bracelet and necklace. These were all glass beaded. They were all hand knotted in between. They did have a tag that said Murano made in Italy. It did not have any precious metals or anything, but it was in such good condition. And this came out of a glass beaded lot that I got from shopgoodwill.com and it sold for $45. I did have them listed for higher, but I was running a sale at my store, so I did take this offer of $45, and the customer said that they look even better in person, which I always like to hear. Sometimes it's really hard to capture the beauty of items through a camera. Next was another item that is so ancient in my inventory. It is a vintage Premier, that's the brand, Premier, um, yellow stoneware creamer or pitcher. It was made in Japan. I actually didn't pay anything for this item. I got it free from a local charity thrift store where because I spent so much money, they just said, go ahead and have it. So my cost of goods was zero. It sold for $6.39. And I did end up making an $8 profit, but would I pick this up again? Definitely not. But one thing you can do if you ever have like a single plate or bowl or in this case a pitcher, you can always use the keyword replacement in your title. So if someone breaks it, they can look for that replacement item on eBay or wherever you're selling it. Next up was a Sam Edelman bronzy snakeskin print loafers. I picked these up at a discount store, kind of like a Ross's, but it's called Gabe's. I purchased them for $10 and they sold for $46.25. So happy with that turnaround. Next we have an item that I wanted to keep for myself, but I have so many coffee cups and coffee mugs in my own cabinets that I did not need anymore. It is a set of mugs and a tree stand from the artist Robert Padillo. That's P-A-D-I-L-L-O. He does these really cool like drip glazed in these awesome colors. Mine were like a teal greenish colors. 
so beautiful. One of them did have a crack in it, but when I did the water test and filled it up with water, it did not leak. So I did note that. The tree stand was also a little bit wonky, so I noted that as well. I totally forgot that I put both USPS Priority and USPS Parcel Select on the listing, which if you're not familiar with Parcel Select, it's kind of basically just like ground and it takes the longest to get to wherever it's going, but it is kind of the cheapest option sometimes. So these weighed almost five pounds or maybe over five pounds. And I was thinking, oh, well, it's, you know, it's heavy. So it's going to go in a priority box without even looking at what the customer paid for. So I packed it all up. It took me about 30 to 40 minutes to pack up all the mugs. I double bubble wrapped them. I, you know, I packed it good. Then I sat at my computer and I realized that the customer selected parcel select which means that the priority box that I just put all of those mugs into and spent 30 minutes packing up could not go US parcel select. Because when you use priority boxes, you can only pay for priority rates. So I had to make a decision. I could either unpack everything that I just spent a half an hour doing and put it in a normal box, or I could just eat the cost of the difference in shipping. And that is what I ended up doing because I certainly did not want to pack that up again. <laughs> so I lost about $13 in shipping, but I did still make a profit off of these. I paid $10 at a barn sale because again, originally I thought that I was going to keep them and I didn't mind paying $10 for them, but I did end up making only a $13.63 profit from that. Lesson learned, check to see what the customer chooses for shipping before you start packing those types of items. <laughs> I was so irritated when I saw that. Two more sales to go over. We have a LL Bean Searsucker blue and white striped shirt. This was actually a size large tall. I believe it was an older LL Bean tag, but this actually sold in less than an hour. I listed it on eBay for $19.99. Someone sent me a $17 offer and off it went to Virginia. And then the last sale I wanna go over is actually something that you have seen before. It is the J. Crew Velour Chartreuse Blazer with a little peplum waist. It is a size 10 tall. I sold this back in December. I think it was December. It was either late December or early January. And there were these like weird reddish pink marks on the front of the blazer. But when I was packing it up, I didn't realize that there was also that on the inside of the cuff here. Uh, so I wrote the customer a note explaining if you're not happy with your transaction, I will accept your return and pay for the shipping back and everything. She did decide to return it, so I did eat that cost of the shipping, um, but then it sold again for full asking price of $39.99 and it's going internationally to Canada. So I do not accept returns from international countries, um, so hopefully they like it and hopefully it fits as well because I really don't wanna list it again. <laughs> All right, so of my 17 sales on eBay, we had $367.64 in sales. I made $14.43 in shipping profits because what I pay for shipping versus what the customer pays for is actually a little less. I had $83.72 in fees, giving me a profit of $298.35 and an average sales price of $21.63. So going over my total numbers for these two weeks, we had $556.64 for those 28 sales. I had $116.39 in fees. My cost of goods this time was $105.51, giving me a profit of $334.74. And my average cost of goods for each item that sold was $3.77, which is right under $4, and that's exactly where I like to keep it. 
Thank you for tuning into this What Sold video. I am currently at 880 subscribers, so I'm very close to 1,000. One of my goals this year in 2022 is to become monetized on YouTube. So those ads that you see throughout videos on YouTube, those the person who put the video out actually gets paid for them because they're letting other companies advertise for them. Um, it's not a lot of money, but you know, the more people that you have to watch, the more money you can potentially make off of it. So in order to become monetized, you need 1,000 subscribers and you need 4,000 watch time hours. I believe I'm around 2,300 watch time hours, so I might be throwing a lot more videos at you. I definitely have a lot more unboxings to do, and I just want to have a good time with everybody. Feel free to share my videos, share my channel. I would greatly appreciate any little help that I can get. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you leave. And also, if you're not subscribed and you want to be, click that subscribe button as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.